What's going on everybody? Kalen here with Modern Day Sniper and um, today is Wednesday. So that means it's a whiteboard Wednesday. I decided to do a little live session here. We're going live um, in the next hour actually. We're gonna be talking about um, our Q&A session with snipers tonight uh, at Modern Day Sniper Monthly. What we're gonna talk about today is cartridge comparisons. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cartridges on here. And these cartridges are pretty common that you're going to find. And um, we always like to do this in our classes to, to show students the benefit of using a ballistic computer program. Um, this is one of those uh, this is one of those things where we see a lot of questions happening in forums, and people are asking, "Hey, should I use this? Or what bullet should I use?" and um, what's the benefits, the pros and cons over this, that, and the other. Well, we're going to try to break that down and give you guys some points to focus on for uh, the next time you're selecting a cartridge um, or selecting um, a projectile for the specific cartridge that you have. That's one of the reasons that having a handheld ballistic computer program with a screen um, is a little bit better than having something like a Kestrel because with the screen, you're able to scroll through those numbers and make things happen really fast um, and get to your data really fast instead of having to click through the interface. So strongly recommend that. And obviously the, you know, the, the PC based um, solvers that are on the internet that you can access via your desktop or laptop, that's also a fantastic tool. Um, recommend also building a spreadsheet out to do a comparison. If you're that type of person that likes to see numbers in a, in a really kind of logical specific way, then that's the, that's the best way um, to just build a spreadsheet out. So let's start this off. So we have our cartridges over here. This is an example on top here for those of you guys who can't see it. If you can't see it, this is a 223 Remington shooting a 77 grain bullet at 2,800 feet a second, or I'm sorry, 2,850, which is an average, average muzzle velocity for um, a 77 grain bullet coming out of um, like an SPR type upper, you know, 20 inches or so. Over here, 500 yard data. Over here, 800 yard data. And then over here, 1,000 yard data. And we do, we do these things like five, I, I like looking at it at 500, 800, and 1,000 just to get a really good idea what the numbers are gonna be. And then how I have this broken down in each column, you have your drop in inches, you have your wind drift for a 10 mile an hour full value wind in inches, and then we have for the hunters out there, for you guys who are going to start um, trying to poke holes in critters at distance, we have remaining energy as well as remaining velocity. The remaining energy is the top number, and the remaining velocity is, uh, I'm sorry, the remaining energy is the bottom number, remaining velocity is the top number. Okay? So as we go through this, um, we're going to kind of compare the, the, we've got a 223 Remington up here. We have Two six millimeters. We have a six millimeter BRA, Ventrest Ackley Improved. We have a six millimeter Creedmoor. Um, the BRA is, I've got it listed with 110 grain A tips at 2,850 feet a second. I got a six millimeter Creedmoor shooting again 110 A tips at 3,000 feet a second. A 6.5 Creedmoor at a normal, normal load um, will shoot 140 ELDMs at 2,730 feet a second. A 6.5 PRC shooting 147s at 3,050 feet a second. A 7 millimeter RSOM, you guys know that that's one of my favorite cartridges for, for long range shooting. Um, shooting 180 grain ELDMs at 2,900 feet a second. 7 millimeter LRM, I'm putting this one down because I got one showing up. It's actually, I think it showed up today, which I'm super pumped about. Um, there's gonna be more on that to follow, so stay tuned. That seven millimeter LRM, it's a long action seven millimeter shooting 190 grain bullet, uh, 190 A tips in this particular set of scenarios at 3,050 feet a second. We have, now we're gonna go down to the 30 cals and we're gonna compare 30, uh, 308 Winchester. We gotta do 308, right? It's like, it's God's cartridge, right? It's not a caliber, it's cartridge, all right? Shoot 175s at 2,700 feet a second. And we have, two long action magnums here in 30 cal. We have a 300 wind mag. And I listed my load for, um, these are Berger 230 grain hybrids, moving at 2,550 feet a second. It's a short barrel, it's a 20, 20 inch barrel, uh, very specific rifle. Um, and then we have a 300 PRC, shooting uh, 230 grain A-tips at 2,850. Now, 
looking at these velocities, first and foremost, this is where you guys can start identifying, hey, what is a really reasonable velocity for me to expect out of this particular cartridge with this particular bullet weight? Super easy to find, just get on the internet, ask some questions of people that, that are trusted sources, and then you're gonna be able to figure out, okay, I can get those, I can get that 180 grain ELDM out of a short action seven millimeter RSOM, and I can get that going at about 2,900 feet a second. Um, this one's out of a 20 inch barrel. So uh, let's see. So uh, 223, that's just up here because that's a that's like a, a cartridge everybody shoots. And a lot of people have been asking us if they should bring a 223 to a win class. And we're gonna talk about that, okay? So that's part of what this is all about. We have uh, the six millimeters, I'm sorry, the six millimeters right here, the BRA, which is a very common cartridge in the competitive space. And then again, the six millimeter Creedmoor, which is a, it's a common cartridge in the competitive space as well. Uh, two six fives, um, two seven millimeters, and then three thirty cals. Okay, these are all average, average cartridges. Okay, so moving over to the 500 yard data. We can start to see, especially for hunters, the majority of you guys that are gonna be out there shooting, if you're, if you're not practicing and training all of the time, 500 yards is probably a really reasonable limit for you guys to set for yourselves. And so this is probably where you're gonna to wanna to live in terms of identifying your data. The other interesting part about this that I wanna put up here is um, a recoil number. And these cartridges, we could go recoil number from R1 being the lowest recoil, which would be up here in the 223 side, R1, and then all the way on down to a big heavy 30 caliber Magnum shooting big heavy bullets at 230 grains plus. So down here in the 300 PRC, we're going to call that a recoil 10, an R10, okay, because on a scale, recoil is important to consider when we're looking at uh, a rifle to select a proper tool for the job. So um, six millimeter BRA, I'm gonna go ahead and put that at like an R3, six millimeter Creedmoor, maybe like an R4, six five Creedmoor, R4. But again, these are subjective. I don't know what your guns weigh. I don't know if you got muzzle brakes on them. These are just my personal interpretations of what I feel uh, the recoil impulse in these cartridges is. 6.5 PRC, we're gonna kind of bump that up to an R5. It's gonna be right in the middle. Um, and same thing with the 308. We're gonna call the 308 an R5 as well. Recoil five right in the middle there. Seven millimeter RSOM, I'm gonna bump that up to like an R7. Seven millimeter LRM, probably an R7 as well. And then over here, the 300, the 300, the, 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 three, the 30 cal magnums, we're gonna list those as R10s at the very top end of the recoil spectrum. So at 500 yards, okay, field conditions, shooting um, off of maybe a tripod or some sort of uh, funky field position where you're not super stable, right? Recoil management's a big concern, especially if you're hunting by yourself. So when we're looking at that, is it advantageous to shoot these giant 30 cal magnums that have a tremendous amount of recoil at these closer ranges where the bullet's getting to the target really fast, but at the same time, are you able to stay in your sight picture to read what happens uh, in those conditions? And so that's a, that's a question you have to ask for yourself, all right? So the next thing we gotta look at is, is wind drift. That's me anyways. I don't really care about bullet drop. Bullet drop is what it is. Um, we solve for that with an app. Wind drift, however, is another thing altogether. I want the most forgiving cartridge that has the most performance in terms of uh, velocity at the target that I'm going to be shooting at for uh, terminal performance. And I also want to make sure that I have uh, good wind performance in there. So if we start looking at these wind numbers, obviously 223 Remington, 10 mile an hour wind equals 30 inches at 500 yards. That's a lot, okay? That's a lot of wind drift. Not to mention, you're not really gonna be killing too much stuff at 500 yards, uh, especially four-legged critters. So coming into the six millimeter BRA, we got much better wind performance at 16 inches. The six Creedmoor, it's going a little faster, 14 inches of drift per 10 mile an hour. Six five Creedmoor, we're gonna lose a little bit of wind performance because that bullet's moving slower and it's a little heavier. 
for its class, okay? That's something to remember. You guys gotta keep this in mind. That's It's all about class, okay? So then look at the 6.5 PRC. We're shooting a 147 ELDM at 3050. We've only got 12 inches of wind drift. And with a recoil number of five out of 10, that is a really, really tempting cartridge to use for, uh, for a hunter because it's gonna allow you the opportunity to have really good recoil management, excellent terminal performance. If we look over here at the PRC at 500 yards, we're moving still at 2,300 feet a second, 2,400 feet a second, and we've got 1,860 foot-pounds of energy. Um, that's, that's awesome. That's, that's like more than enough. Okay, so moving on up the line, we got a 7 RSOM shooting 180 grain ELDM. We got better wind drift performance because we have a higher VC bullet. However, we have more recoil to deal with. Energy is in the same class. Remaining velocity is in the same class. So if you're looking for a cartridge that you want to have a little bit lighter recoil, but still excellent performance in the wind and under field conditions that you're gonna be able to spot your, your impacts, one of these two cartridges is probably gonna be what you wanna go with, okay? Now, the one thing to say, um, as we get farther out in distance, we'll talk about the 800 yard and 1000 yard column here in a minute, you really cannot beat the performance of a seven millimeter projectile in comparison uh, to weight classes, right? So if I took heavy in class for 6.5, heavy in class weight bullet for seven millimeter and heavy in weight class bullet for 300 or 30 caliber, we're just not gonna be able to get the same um, performance from a 6.5 or a 30 cal that we can with the seven millimeter just because those bullets are so aerodynamically effective and they just have extremely high uh, ballistic coefficients given their cross-sectional density and the dimensions of the projectile itself. So it's really hard to argue with seven millimeter performance when we're looking at uh, field conditions. Um, there's a reason a lot of F-class guys choose the seven R SOM, simply because it's a very, very accurate cartridge um, and it has mild recoil, but then we can still take advantage of that, uh, the extended barrel life of a short action magnum in comparison to long action magnums. And then we can also take advantage of more mild recoil and uh, it's not going to beat those guys up all day long not that they shoot a whole lot but they still shoot quite a bit they're really really good at what they do okay so coming into the magnums obviously okay so let's jump here to the 308 for all my military and law enforcement guys um you guys are you guys are like we're shooting 308 it's not the most efficient long range cartridge at all we have 23 inches of wind drift um, at 500 yards per 10 mile an hour full value compared to essentially half that with a 6.5 Creedmoor. So you, you guys are gonna have to be on your game big time when it comes to read and wind. Um, now, it, and it just gets worse the farther out we go. The bullet's gonna slow down dramatically and we're going to have you know more issues, all right? So the 308 is a great training cartridge. It's a great cartridge to use um, when we're not having to make super long shots. Uh, and for guys that are trying to train themselves to be more proficient in their ability to read the subtle changes in wind and still get impacts, that's where we're going to want to be. We're going to start shooting 308. Now, jumping into the belted magnums. Well, one of them is a belted magnum, the other one's not. So over here, the 300 wind mag, this 230 grain load is super slow. It's coming out of a 20 inch barrel with a suppressor but it has phenomenal performance simply because I'm taking advantage of the aerodynamic efficiency of the projectile, that Berger 230 grain hybrid. So I got 15 inches of drift of wind at 500 yards. So it's not as good as the 6.5 PRC and it has far more recoil. Okay, it's got almost twice as much recoil as the 6.5 PRC. So if you're, that, if you're that guy that's gonna be looking for uh, a, law, uh, a hunting rifle, I'm not even gonna say long range hunting rifle, a hunting rifle in general, probably wanna shy away from those, those big 30 cal magnums, unless you're hunting with a friend and unless you're hunting with somebody who, who knows how to spot your impacts or you're really proficient with that rifle and you're like, you know what, no, I'm, I'm good, I got this, no problem. Hey, I'm not trying to tell anybody how to do anything, I'm just, giving you guys this as a comparison, okay? So 300 PRC, 
shooting 230 grain a tips bumping up the muzzle velocity i'm probably a little light on muzzle velocity here at 2850 i want to be a little bit more conservative i've heard some people say they can get the 300 prc going 2950 with uh 230 grain bullets i haven't had any experience with the cartridge yet other than talking to people so i'm not going to throw anything out there that i don't know um but 11 inches of drift in terms of 10 mile an hour winds but we have um let's see we've got tons of energy left tons and tons of energy left all right um so over here we start looking at the 800 yard column on the 800 yard column we can start to see some spreads in those numbers okay and what i mean by spreads in those numbers um you can start looking at it and from the standpoint of okay what is a 10 mile an hour wind at 800 yards it's 91 inches per 10 mile an hour for a 223 okay but then we start jumping down into 45 inches of drift for the bra 42 inches of drift for the six creedmoor 50 inches of drift for the six five creedmoor 34 inches of drift over here for the six five prc so that's the clear winner right there in this in this particular category of the sixes and the six fives. So now we come down here to the seven LRM. We're not gaining a whole lot. We're not gaining a whole lot in wind drift, only 29 inches. Then we obviously the 308 at 67 inches. So for those of you guys who are in the military and you guys are, you know, calling wind, just understand that every 10 miles an hour that's 67 inches okay so it's 6.7 inches for every mile an hour at 800 yards so for you guys that are teachers out there in that space make sure your students understand that that's super important okay now we got 42 inches of drift for the 300 wind mag shooting 230s um, then we have 30 inches of drift for that 300 prc now if this is the range that you're living okay this is the range that you're living with these heavier 30 cals the recoil might not be that big of a deal because I'm gonna have time, I'm gonna have enough time to recover from that recoil to see what happened at the target, okay? So that's all determined based upon you as the shooter and how you're running your gun, okay? So just keep that in mind. Um, so the next thing that we gotta talk about too, this is where we wanna start talking about drop and bullet drop. And so bullet drop is really, it correlates a lot to wind. So we can see that, as an example, okay, let's look at the seven millimeter LRM. 123 inches of drop, 29 inches of wind drift for a 10 mile an hour wind. And I'm still at 2,000, I'm still at 2,100 feet a second with almost 2,000 foot pounds of energy at 800 yards. So over here with the 300 PRC, I've got 141 inches of drop, okay, and 30 inches of wind drift so it's really it's it's in the it's in the zone but if i push this bullet a little faster i'm going to get some more out of it in the in the external ballistics game if that makes sense so 800 yards we can start seeing now hey where is my bullet going to run out of gas in terms of uh, lethality when it comes to killing critters so let's go Obviously, the 223, you're not going to be doing much with that. Uh, from a professional standpoint, I'm definitely not going to stand out there and let somebody shoot at me with a 223. Um, but it, so it's going to deny, uh, it's going to deny people access to certain areas or deny the enemy access to areas um, using like precision suppression. Um, and you're going to poke a hole in somebody if you hit them. But uh, it's not going to be as hard hitting as something with a, you know, a 30 cal. Um, over here with the six millimeters. We're running out of steam, guys. We're, we're at 1,720 feet a second, 1,850 feet a second, and we're getting close to that transonic region um, where we're going to start transitioning from supersonic flight to subsonic flight. Now, jumping over here to the 6.5 Creedmoor, even slower, okay? That bullet is not moving fast enough. Maybe if I was pushing this at like 2,800 feet a second uh, using hand loads, um, right on the edge of the pressure uh, pressure threshold, I'm going to get more performance out of it. But then the trade-off is barrel life, of course. So coming in here to the 6.5 PRC, 34 inches of wind drift and still at 2,000 foot-pounds of energy. That 6.5 PRC, man, it really, really 
it's a great cartridge. It's a great selection for the, the, the Western mountain hunter that is shooting in a lot of unknown conditions at distances that you might be pushing the boundaries just a little bit. It's going to give you that little bit of forgiveness in there. So moving into the sevens, obviously the sevens, man, we got tons of energy left, no problems in that regard. And then obviously the 308, it's like at 800 yards, you know, again, same thing. Uh, I'm not going to stand up there and let somebody shoot at me with a 308. However, it's still, um, it's still an option, but you're going to have a lot less forgiveness. Jumping over here to the 300s, losing lots of energy over here on the 230 grain bullet. And the reason for that is I am, I'm not pushing that bullet fast enough. If I wanted to get some more out of it with that shorter barrel, I'd have to go down in bullet weight to get more velocity, even though the BC is gonna be slightly less, I'm gonna end up gaining more in the long run, if that makes sense. And then the 300 PRC, really comparable, actually less than the seven LRM, and it's getting into comparable performance to the seven song at that distance in both wind and energy. So we're looking at that and going, okay, well, do I really need all of that recoil? Or am I going to use that rifle for long range interdiction type stuff beyond 800? And that's where we're going to talk. The last thing we're going to talk about is this thousand yard column. So looking at wind drift here again, drop, we can see 467 inches. Now nah, that's that thing's just falling out of the sky like a stone. Um, 294 inches of drop for the six BRA. The six Creedmoor is 258, 260, um, 331 inches. For the 6.5 Creedmoor, that bullet's starting to run out of steam big time just because of the BC and the lower velocity. However, over here at the 6.5 PRC, we're at 230 inches of drop and 58 inches of wind drift for 10 mile an hour. That's still pretty damn good. And we're still cruising along at 760 or 1,760 feet a second, well inside supersonic, so that's badass. So over here at the 7s, 7 RSOM and 7 LRM, 258 or 260 inches of drop, 220 inches of drop for the 7 LRM. Well, pretty close in class to wind drift. Then over here we have 1,730 feet a second remaining velocity and 1,924 feet a second remaining velocity. So that extra umph that the LRM gets gives the bullet a little bit more um, umph at distance. Uh, 308 Winchester, man, you might as well just just take a leak into, the, into a breeze. That's all that's happening at Grand, it's a lot. So 116 inches of wind drift uh, for 10 mile an hour winds. So that's essentially 11 inches about that for, uh, for one mile an hour. So um, something to consider, right? A 20 inch wide plate, one mile an hour equals 10 inches or 11 inches. So if I'm off by a mile an hour or so, I'm gonna miss that plate, all right? So then we come over here to the 300s, 341 inches of drop for the 300 wind mag, 69 inches of drift, and then we have the 300 PRC at 50 inches and 249. So we can see that the sevens at distance overtake, let's see right here. So there's our sevens right here. The sevens overtake in sort. So the 300, the 300 PRC, um, it's right there in performance with the, uh, in terms of wind and remaining velocity as the seven LRM and you have less recoil with the seven millimeter. So um, I hope you guys got something out of this. I'm really bummed out that the Instagram feed didn't work. I'm gonna jump on there and figure it out and, and say I'm sorry because people are probably upset. But um, I'm, I just wanted to throw this whiteboard Wednesday up for you guys and um, give you some perspective on how to do some comparisons for different cartridges. It pays off to just sit there and, and go through it. And, and once you see it, you write it, and then you can hopefully close the loop on the learning process and, uh, and get you some better perspective. Because I don't think there's a whole lot of shooters that do this. Uh, a lot of people just get on the internet and say, oh, well, that guy says this is the best thing, so that's what I'm gonna get. And then you realize when you come to a class with us, you're like, hey man, that thir that 300 PRC, I can't I can't really do much with that thing inside 400 yards to spot my own impact. So if I'm alone, I need to make sure everything is right. 
um, and I need to be pretty proficient at what I'm doing. So, um, and then you can also base these on other cartridges in class. Like the 7 LRM is pretty equal in performance to uh, like a 28 nozzler. Uh, my buddy Luke hunts with a 28 nozzler. He shoots 175 grain bullets at 3150 or 3125, somewhere in there. Um, and so the trade-off, you know, obviously we want to always go heavy with bullets in our class and our caliber class, but um, you can go lighter. And one of the things that I'm looking at doing is taking my seven SOM and shooting like 168s out of that thing and maybe looking at that to use for NRL Hunter. Uh, because even taking that thing down from 180s to 168s, the recoil is going to be markedly different in terms of management wise. And uh, it's going to be um, a really heavy hitting cartridge and really forgiving in the wind. But it's gonna be a tough trade off between a 6.5 PRC and the seven song. So these are all the questions that we have to ask individually. And then you now have the tools to be able to do it for yourself. All right guys, so little whiteboard Wednesday for you. If you like that video, make sure you hit the like button and follow us on the channel. If you want more information like this, we do this all the time over at the Modern Day Rifleman Network, um, which is moderndayrifleman.com. That's where we host all of our digital training, our digital master classes, and our monthly subscription service. It's a badass online network, a, a social community that is full of discerning shooters just like you that just want great information, free of the social media drama and nonsense. So we hope you guys come by and check us out. Till next time, deuces. Thank you.